walk into the space where creators have aligned A positive and intellectual collab of open minds For sharing and learning from one another, it's a vibe We can watch a podcast on the mic Subscribe, educators spitting bars I guess you didn't know, I'm multifaceted and humble Taking off life goals The classroom is my comfort zone, where I plant and sow Seeds of knowledge, compassion, empathy and hope Reading is the key to unlocking your potential Countless benefits, including cognitive and mental Regardless of the genre, books are highly influential Go get yours, I'll get mine Make you strive Monumental Come rock with me and get down to this new jam Making out between my friends, I had a very simple plan Educate the masses, through books and life lessons It's a grand slam I'm out Tzala Falaba and welcome to the Reads with Rosa podcast. I am so excited to introduce today's guest. She is a content creator, a mental health advocate, and the executive director of Polly's and Mental Health. All the way from Oregon, USA, welcome to the show, Misha Famosili. Hi, sis. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> how are you sis how are you and that how are things in that part of the world it's it's pretty good um Oregon had its first like hot summer day yesterday mm. and I'm not about it but I mean overall things are pretty open around here now so oh, okay. about where is our whereabouts is Oregon like is it like midwest or is it like on the east coast or on the west coast like whereabouts are you we're on the west so we're oh, right okay. above california and then oh. washington is above us so we're right by the ocean i see i see okay well i do have more questions about that but uh before we get started with our talanoa i like to give guests an opportunity to you know shout out their people shout out your villages uh and your support crew so go ahead sis Sure. Okay. So um, my name is Misha. I was born and raised in Hawaii. Um, my partner, his name is Helton, and he's from California. And um, my parents' villages, my mom's family is from Ta'u. And then my dad's family, or my dad actually, is from Fitiuta. Um, and we now all live here in Oregon together, which is a really mm -hmm. random state, but um, yeah, that's where we ended up settling. I mean, you were born in Hawaii, but how long have you been there in that area of the US? So I um, I grew up in Hawaii until my after my first year of college. Oh. Um, so I think I was 19 when I left. And then I moved to Utah for a little bit, and then I, I came here. So I think my husband and I have been here for, um, like, seven years, eight mm. years. Yeah, but this wow. is just where my sisters went to school. I so, can. yeah. Solid. Well, I guess it's nice that you have family around, so that's always important as well, so that's cool. You know, I was thinking about – um because I – I was wondering about where you were born and then you mentioned Hawaii because I remember seeing on your, like just some of the content you create where you're dancing, doing hula dancing. I'm like, was well, she pa Hawaiian or does she grow up there? Or So you have a love for, for dancing, for hula dancing? I do. Um, so growing up, uh, my mom actually made us do karate, but I don't think yeah. she realized that we would be like, I'm almost six feet tall and I'm like a big girl. So nobody wants to fight me anyways. <laughs> so that was <laughs> We knew how to defend ourselves, but um, no one ever gave us trouble. Um, so hula was like my, my passion project. Like I enrolled myself and, wow. and I did it from fifth grade till I graduated high school. So what, I mean, with the karate, like what, how far did you go in that? Like, you know, about what, you know, there's like about different levels. Like, yeah. did you get very far or? I did. Um, so, well, my sister had her black belt and she had, she taught her own class. Um, and I was on the belt right before I would test for a black belt. Um, oh. and it cost a lot of money to like, 
try. Mm -hmm. um, and my heart just wasn't into it. So I did make it really far. Um, I just hated it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of your cultural roots, in terms of, um, you know, Samoan, your Samoan roots, um, growing up, were, were you immersed in the culture, uh, even though, you know, living abroad, you know, in the diaspora, were you, were there opportunities to be immersed in the culture and to be connected with other Samoans in the community, you know, growing up in Hawaii or, yeah. Yeah. So where I'm from is pretty cool because it's mostly Polynesians. Um, and so we're the majority which is kind of a different experience living here in the diaspora um, where we're the only brown people in our town. But yeah, so growing up though, I was around a whole bunch of different Polynesians. Um, and it was, we had opportunities in high school to do like We Are Samoa, which is a Samoan festival in Hawaii. Um, and then when I went to college, they offered um, Samoan language as, um, as one of the classes you could take and there are different clubs and things. So, yeah, I mean, we're heavily influenced on like Hawaiian and Asian culture, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, there was opportunities to learn. And then I like threw myself into trying to learn about um, more Samoan ways of life as I got older. I remember, I don't know if it was last year or maybe the year before you were on this mission, like uh, Samoan language, journey um can i ask how how that has kind of how has that gone for you um you know are you still continuing to try and you know learn the language and just you know be better and yeah yeah so um we did have a lot of time to do things so mm. i like threw myself into youtube and learning Samoan um throughout 2020 but i ended up with a bunch of friends making a Let's Learn Samoan page. And it was more just like a peer um, try learn together group. And it was really fun. Um, I think the issue that we ran into though was eventually people started having to go to work. And then mm -hmm. um, there were also, I took a class um, through a company or through an organization called Lingafa. Mm -hmm. they're, um, they're from, California and their classes are so good that I felt like everyone should mm. learn from the professionals. And so I actually, I did a class with them and um, I'm on my way to do another, I'm probably gonna redo the first class, honestly. Mm. Um, Cause I, I went a few times to the second one where we were learning how to make sentences and stuff. And I was like, mm, we're not ready. Let's go mm. back to the first one. But yeah, so it's it's been fun. Yay. That's good to hear. I'm glad because I, I remember those posts <laughs> from back then. So I was like, oh, you know, I hope she's doing okay. I wonder how that journey's going. So that's good to hear. That's really good to hear. Mm -hmm. I was wondering about Samoa. Like, um, you know, did you, growing up in Hawaii, did you go to Samoa? Like, did you go back? Were your family able to kind of like, were, you, were there opportunities to go back to the island? American Samoa, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, Um. so the way like most of the flights work, um, Samoa stops in Hawaii before they go to mm -hmm. the States. And so um, I feel like we've seen a lot of people as they like transitioned or visit. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only times my family, like my dad has been back, has mm -hmm. been for funerals. Um, I went once, I had a friend who like hosted me and I stayed there for like a month. Wow. Um, yeah, talk about overstaying my welcome, but I like <laughs> loved it. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, if I could have moved there, I, I probably would have. Um, mm. But yeah, I haven't been able to go back yet. It's mm. pretty costly. <laughs> Mm -mm. Yeah, I think it's on our bucket list to go see where my dad grew up because, like, the Manua Islands are really like tiny, mm. so you have to catch a um, like a small plane. And I was like, mm. Mm. so we'll see. Yeah, I've only been to American Samoa once. Like that was in 2017. My uncle 
passed away. So I went with my dad. It was like my first time. And I was just kind of, yeah. Everywhere I could just hear the American accent. <laughs> was just like, I was just like, oh, okay, okay. Um, but yeah, that was, it was really, it was a really, it was a really nice experience, eye-opening. Um, yeah, and of course the cultural experience of being there for a massive funeral was something else as well. So that yeah. was, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> Wait, where did you grow up? Oh, I'm, I've grown up in New Zealand. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, grew up in New Zealand. And although we've been to Samoa, Samoa many times, but American Samoa, um, like my dad's family is from there, his uh, mum's family, so my grandmother's family. And so we have a lot of cousins who have gone through the army, uh, the yeah. US army, and, you know, yeah, just done amazing things been so successful um so it's really cool um but yeah that was such a um new experience going to american samoa in 2017 it was nice to meet the cousins because i think a lot of us we just have connected thankfully to the internet you know like mm -hmm. through technology um but to actually see our cousins face to face just yeah like we have family, obviously growing up in New Zealand and then Australia, we're very close. But American Samoa, and then it's just like a whole. I was gonna say it's a whole, it's just over there. It's <laughs> not as easy to access as going yeah. to Samoa, right? Like regularly. So yeah, have you been I to Samoa? Like the other Samoa or I just haven't. Like, mm. Yeah, so it's it's on my to do list. But I was like, I don't think New Zealanders realize how much we all wish we lived there. Oh really? It is always my goal to go to New Zealand. Um, oh, wow. yeah. okay. Why is that? I don't know. I well, one, they have you guys have better candy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like New Zealanders would say that Americans have the 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 snacks and the candy is like a whole nother level, like Nick level, you know. So I feel like they would say the same. But what, yeah. what else about New Zealand is it that? Um, like? I think just like culture in general. So like because we're in Hawaii, we used to get a lot of like New Zealand groups that would come by. Um, and I was just, I'm obsessed. I've always wanted to live there. Um, but yeah, no, the candy is actually a big draw. So like really? anytime I have um, one of my friends went back home there recently or I think she had to go to Australia one of them um but she sent me like a big pack of like um different like chocolates and like um what are those called like peanut slabs and things and I was like oh, oh you like peanut slabs <laughs> so good yeah but like your guys Cadbury selection sorry that's so fat all I'm thinking about is like the food yeah, there not, I was wondering if you're talking about Cadbury because I have to I have to say like yeah New Zealand chocolate like I've I'm not like fanatic about eating chocolate, but definitely, um, you know, when I'm away from home and then I, I just realize how nice New Zealand chocolate is. Got to give mm -hmm. you that. It, it, it is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And um, my friend, um, she's currently, she just went back home to get married. Uh, she's from the States. And so she was just like, okay, when you go home, you better come back with some like peanut slabs. No, the almond gold, almond gold. Yeah. I'm like, okay, relax. Okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's just like, those peanut slabs are just, yeah, the winner. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny so to hear bad. you say the same thing. <laughs> yeah, those are my favorite. <laughs> well, that's funny. Um, I want to talk, I want to get into, um, you know, you are an advocate for mental health and you have been, um, you've also shared on, you know, on your platforms um, about your own journey um, and struggles with mental health. I want to, first of all, talk about the, the collective, I, I think, yeah. that you have with your friends, um, you know, Polly's and mental health. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about the collective like how did you but are you close friends how did you all come together to create 
um, the collective or this organization or at least support uh, for others? Yeah, so the founders of Polyism and Mental Health, her name is Ray, and she's located in Utah. And then um, our connecting link is actually the, um, oh, I don't know what her title is, but anyways, the her helper person or her, one of the members of the team is um, Kamale Brown. And mm -hmm. so during the pandemic, I got really close to Kamale and, um, they invited me to be a part of the team. So Polys and Men's Health in general is an advocacy page, but I think a big goal was to just normalize talking about mental health or asking for help. Um, and recently we've been trying to do more like workshops in schools or um, we're creating like a directory so that folks who are looking for therapy can hopefully find other like PI therapists that they might feel more mm -hmm. comfortable with. Because that's a big issue is that even when people go to therapy, they don't go back to the second session because um, it's hard to relate to some people who don't understand your culture um, mm -hmm. more to like our collective um, mentality than is understand, understood here in the States. Mm. So are there therapists like Polynesia, like are there, you know, Pacifica therapists um, that you've been able to get on board or at least be there to be some, uh, a form of support for uh, those who need it or? Yeah, um, there's actually, um, some of the states don't have as many, like, so Oregon doesn't have any right now. Um, I did actually recently find a Micronesian, um, or actually I think he is, what is his exact, I think he's Palauan um, in Oregon, but it's not near where I am. But a lot of other states like California, Utah, which I know probably just sounds like random places right now to <laughs> So, so sorry. Um, you're, okay, you're fine. You're fine. The states have more. Um, mm. And and I think there will be more as um, as time goes on, because I think people are finding there's a need and um, mm. people need someone that they can trust. But yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's interesting uh, about your the collective, your advocacy page, uh, because there are many people who have uh, featured um, and shared their struggles with mm -hmm. mental health, their journey, um, which is so brave and so courageous, um, you know, because there is the stigma behind, like, opening up and, and, and share, yeah. really sharing the struggles as opposed to just showing all the good stuff, right, especially uh, on social media. And I was wondering, where do you, uh, where does the collective find, where do you find uh, these amazing, brave <laughs> souls who come on board and, and share their stories? Like, again, is it like um, word of mouth or is it, are they more based in the US or do you reach out to connections all over the, the world? Mm -hmm. I, I Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of open. So every so often we'll post like a um, like an Instagram story asking people if they want to share. Um, sometimes we'll see a post and then approach people. Um, and then a lot of times it's us bugging our friends. So <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, guys, we can do it. So yeah, but it is actually open. Um, I know like the title itself, Polly's and Mental Health. Um, mm -hmm might give people the illusion that it's only for Polynesians and it's not, it's definitely mm -hmm. open to all like Pacifica people. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of reasons we haven't changed brand names just yet. Mm -hmm. um, I think a big one would be um, we don't have um, representation from the other groups yet. And um, we don't want to tokenize people just being like, hey, right. you're, you're Melanesian, can you come on to, you know, or yeah. something like that. We would like it to be unorganic or something that mm. um, everybody felt good about. But I think we're working on it. The The goal is to 
be very specific that it's for everyone. And they don't only have to hear the state. I think anyone could share their story. Mm. You know, I was wondering about, um, because, you know, I mentioned earlier that you have also shared uh, some of your struggles. And I wonder, being a part of this collective, um, was the intention that the 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 your group in charge at some point share um your own journey like is that kind of like what brought you together is this is that you all have at some point really gone through some difficult times you know <laughs> uh, related to mental health and anxiety and depression and things like that um so was the expectation that you eventually have to share your story or did you just kind of use your own platform and say, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to share my story. Do you know? Yeah. Um, I actually think all of us to my knowledge have at one point shared yeah. our stories on there. Um, mm -hmm. But I do use more of my platform to talk about myself so that mm -hmm. all these mental health can highlight other people who are willing to share um mm. but yeah any ray kamale or i like we'll talk about it anytime someone asks mm. um but yeah i i think the big goal is for it to be about um others learning that they're not alone mm. so i think it's a big thing mm. Um, how do we normalize these conversations? And I, I know that obviously online connections, um, but I'm thinking more uh, community based in like churches and like in your experiences um, where you live or at least where you used to live, like are conversations becoming normalized, you know, around uh, mental health? Like are there community groups? Um, not necessarily online, but perhaps connected to uh, faith-based platforms and things like that, church. And I mean, are you aware of, of yeah? Yeah, um, there are actually a bunch of really cool support groups. Um, wherever there is a bigger Pacifica community, there mm -hmm. will be a lot more um, resources. Um, it's harder for those who don't live by other Pacifica people. Um, and some churches offer that too. I think um, what's hard is um, sep or finding a good middle between culture and um, culture and validating our feelings and emotions. Um, for example, I think it's just not as natural for um, like Samoans in general to be like, I'm feeling really sad today, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and it's just not super common, but I, I do think that there are opportunities for that. So I think mm -hmm. I think things are getting better. I think there are more resus resources for everyone, um, but I think there's a lot of work to be done. Mm. Can you share a little bit about your journey? Um, and and your experiences or uh, struggles with mental health and how how are you able to just keep going um through you know those ups and downs mm -hmm. um so i think the biggest part or the hardest part i think is identifying um that sometimes the way we're coping and and just the thoughts that we're having aren't normal. <laughs> mm. So I think my whole life I've probably struggled with anxiety in some form or depression. And I just didn't know that that wasn't what everyone was experiencing or I didn't have words for it. So once someone mm. gave me a word to like this group of symptoms that I've always had, I was like, Ha, huh, okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. What kind of led me to like jump starting my whole like mental health advocacy thing though was um, my nephew had stage four cancer and um, during his treatment and things like that, it's just a rough, um, mm -hmm. he was four. And so it was just overall a rough um, journey. And 
after he had passed so much of like what I was feeling for that past like year or so um, decided to like come up where I was almost to like a point like of past feeling. Like I, um, I remember mentioning to my husband that I would rather be with my nephew in terms of like not being alive. Um, and he was just like, we, you need to, we need to find a better solution because that's not the type of thoughts that mm. we should be having or is healthy to have. And so he actually encouraged me to go talk to my doctor and to seek therapy. But I think that that almost permission, not, not that I needed permission for my spouse to do anything, mm. but almost that like, hey, it's, it's okay to ask for help gave me the courage to go to therapy and then to um, go to the doctor where I realized I actually was, not only did I have medication now to help manage um, like intrusive thoughts and things like that, but I was also anemic and I was vitamin mm -hmm. D deficient. Like I had a lot of vitamins that my body was lacking too. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's a mixture of both. Um, anyway, so I, my YouTube channel kind of helped me process that for like, that first year. Um, and I think the reason that I decided to share more, so I have anxiety, I have depression. I'm also pretty sure I have like inattentive ADHD, mm -hmm. which isn't a big, and like it doesn't interfere with too many things, but I often will like disassociate. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it just makes work and things harder. Um, and then, I recently, within the past few months, um, I started experiencing suicidal ideations, which is very new to me. Um, mm. Luckily, I have a good therapist. We made a like safety plan, and I I understood what triggered me. Mm. But anyway, so the gist of me like sharing any of this was, um, I have a great family. Like I have a very supportive spouse. I have great friends. Um, so if if I, someone who has a really solid support system, who has like a roof over their head and everything that I need like um, physically to be happy, I just keep thinking people who don't have that same support or even people like me, um, how scary it must be to feel like you're the only one or that, that what you're feeling um yeah is not real i don't know how to word it sometimes irrational mm -hmm. thoughts make you think things are truth mm -hmm. and they're not so just having other people share their experiences would hopefully help people know that they're not alone mm -hmm. but yeah I mean, it, you know it sounds like the therapy you know your therapy sessions have have really helped you come this far and how was it how difficult was it to go to that very first session did you at any point kind of back away and go oh no 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 not today no, I'll go tomorrow so I've been in therapy for two almost three years and I still like weekly try to fire my therapist um <laughs> I, I always don't want to go um so I've done things that made it easier. Like I do mine virtually. So now I don't have an excuse that I don't want to get up and whatnot. But that first session, um, it honestly, yeah, no, there was a lot of like high anxiety. I don't know this lady. What's she going to look like? What's going to mm -hmm. happen? Um, I didn't know what to expect. And that was scary. But I was also in a place where I was like, if I don't get help, I'm going to explode. If I don't talk to somebody, I'm going to lose it. So um, I left that session with such a like sigh of relief. Mm. And that was so worth it. You are a content creator. Um, and I have to say, uh, this is something that I'm really loving at the moment that you're doing is the colored pause. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yeah. I'm loving that. And I'm always like, ooh, I wonder what color she's going to come up with next. <laughs> so, like, um, usually when I log into Instagram, I 
whatever is the first thing that shows on my feed, then that's like, oh, okay, I don't really scroll, scroll, scroll. And it was just this, I can't remember when it was when I noticed and I was like, oh, hey, she's doing okay and so now i'm always like i'm gonna click to find out did i miss a color did i what, what's going on so tell tell me about being a content creator um you know because you've got a tiktok account you've got your ig um and hopefully wink wink you'll begin you know you start again i know i know it takes time people you, man, they don't realize, you know people don't realize how how difficult it is to to manage all this right so we'll we'll get back to the youtube but yeah Tell us about being a content creator and what is, how do you feel about that whole, yeah, that? <laughs> mm. I, uh, it's such a love hate with social media um, because of who I am as a person. Mm. Um, I can get like a million positive comments. And I swear one negative comment, I'm like, I, I give up. I give up. No. <laughs> so hard. I think um, I was pretty active on um, all forms of social media for a bit. And I think um, I'm at a point where I'm okay with doing it on my terms. So whatever it is making me feel happy and not um, because people who don't create content don't understand like the algorithm is a pain in the butt. And mm. so if you're not posting this time, this time, this time, or keeping up with trends or, you know, trying to fulfill the things that you need once to get um, monetized or to make it, you know, worth your time at all. Um, so I switched from my goal being to be like monetized and to keep that as a thing to just doing it when it makes me happy. Good, good, <laughs> yeah. The, um, the colored food thing came along um, and I really like it. Like I, I honestly do it for me. And then- Because yeah, you look so happy. That's why I had to ask. <laughs> not saying that your other content is not you being happy because uh, I've seen you dancing and stuff, but I'm just like, this is, this is the bomb. I love it. It's just so fun. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, um, I like, I like TikTok the most right mm -hmm. now, just because um, in general, you can really post whatever you want, mm -hmm. right? Every other platform, you have to be pretty like niched down um, in order to grow. But TikTok's mm -hmm. kind of like, they pick one video that they like and they're like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just have more freedom, I think, to do things as I want. Um, do you feel that, I mean, I know, I, I like that you've said you finally decided, you know, you're going to do what makes you happy. Um, were you starting to feel like you were just posting for, um, you know, do you, did, were you going, did you ever go through a phase where you're like feeling pressured to be able to, to post certain content? content you've mentioned trends and keeping up with trends and did you ever feel like you have a responsibility to your followers yeah you know what I mean? and I have to ask these because you know um I don't I mean I have guests on but like they do a whole range of things and and I know that you do a lot you create you have in the past and still are creating content so I was like yo this is my opportunity to to ask questions that I'm sure other people are kind of like curious about you know yeah <laughs> yeah <clears throat> um I let's see it's so hard not to so in in social media growth they want you to have a niche um, because that's what people come back for, right? Is they want like very consistent things. But a lot of times, like we aren't always super consistent as like what we want to create. And so it was hard to, um, to only do like plus personal plus size Polynesian things. Um, and yeah, I, it's just hard to feel creative, I think. Mm. Um, so what really burnt me out was, I think, Christmas 2020, I did Vlogmas. Oh, yes, was, yes. <laughs> that was so hard. It was so hard. Um, it was great. I actually rewatched some last night. So I was like, wow, I haven't watched my 
videos in a long time. Um, and I love being able to like look at how small my nephews were. Mm. Then. And so vlogging is feeling more appealing to me right now. But um, yeah, it, it can be hard to feel like you have to do the same right. thing you you always do. Yeah. Does, um you know, do you think uh, on YouTube, do you think that you will start vlogging and, 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 and posting more content on your channel? Um, or do you think you'll just keep uh, like Amy for the TikTok uh, audience? I actually, so because I was rewatching things yesterday, I was yeah. like, I want to start my YouTube channel. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Um, yes. Okay. I do. I, I don't know in what capacity. Mm -hmm. um, I do actually like interviewing people. So Rosa, mm -hmm. one day we're going to be switched <laughs> and I get to interview you. Um, I'm going to freak out. I'll be like so anxious and be like, yeah. Anyways, that's a no, whole other story. <laughs> um, I do like the idea of vlogging. Mm -hmm. um, I like interviewing. Um, but I think a lot of it, um, I made my channel Love Mish because it was supposed to be like a um, a virtual diary. And right. so I haven't done much of that. And so I was like, maybe I'll start doing like letters or like yeah. something like that. But yeah, we'll see. Also with the snack hauls, yeah. um, I end up buying so much and I can <laughs> really fit so much in like a 30 second video. So I was like, so I'm, it it's, it's funny to hear you say that. Cause honestly, when I watched him, I'm like, but how much does she really buy? I'm like, but yeah, I'm like, I have okay, to cut what's so going much. On? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, she must have so much fun at the supermarket. <laughs> I was like looking for colors. I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. I love it. Yeah. I keep posting it. Like, I, I'm sure other people love it too, but they're definitely caught my eye. I mean, not that other things didn't, but I was just like, okay, sis, I see you. <laughs> Yeah, I would love to do like mukbangs or something on YouTube where I could talk more about it. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, what is the biggest misconception that people have about content creators? Mm, that it's easy. Mm. <laughs> I th I really think people think we'd like wake up and we're like film video, post it, but like. Yeah. If you're if you're someone who is editing, you're content yeah. planning, you're sometimes people bulk shoot things so that they have it consistently. We're watching algorithms, when should we post? Um, and trying to just keep on top of it's so much work. Yeah. It's so much work to remember to video if you are someone that goes out of the whatever or go goes outside and does things. Right. But even what you do, like you're scheduling, you're following up with people. And then what if people bail like I did yesterday? Um, <laughs> you know, like your content, it, it revolves around other people's schedules yeah. and editing and posting. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, it's super crazy um, that you bring it up because like I, I'm, I try and be super organized in my teacher life. <laughs> in, in my other life, other things going on, I try to be super organized. But I have to say, the podcast schedule is probably the most organized thing. The one thing I'm good at doing. So I have, um, yeah, it, it really is. When I first started the podcast all of last year, I had a, my dear friend, um, shout out to Evo in Melbourne. We hadn't actually met. We met through uh, a fellowship online Bible study. We all went to this, uh, different branches of and so she is amazing at editing and she's a creative so she was doing all the editing for me um we were scheduling we were meeting like on the weekly and then yeah it was just this whole big mission and then she took on a new job um doing some amazing things with creative work and so this year um I've been doing everything, trying to learn off YouTube, trying to remember things, tips and stuff that she taught me. Um, but I, with the podcast schedule, how it works is like, for example, we're talking now and I'm about to go on summer vacation. I'm just wrapping up summer school. And then it, while I'm away, the, the whole purpose of 
doing all these interviews these past four weeks is for July and August. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, June, July, and August. So basically, I'm going home to New Zealand, and the idea is that oh. I'm just going to be uploading, um, yeah. you know, just scheduling the the interviews so I have been um, very intentional around this time of the year because I just kind of I need to turn off my teacher hat I need to uh, turn off my my podcast all of that so that when I go home I can just rest my mind I can read I can just not worry about not that I worry about it but I'm real like once I'm in the zone I don't turn off like like right now we're in summer school. Our school finished three weeks ago and then I stayed on to do three weeks. So I'm still hardcore, 200% teacher mode. And I cannot, until I'm on that plane on Saturday, I'm not going to be able to turn <laughs> everything. I'm already thinking about the new academic year. Like I'm going to yeah. do this. This is my schedule. So I'm so grateful that, um, you know, I've reached out to people like yourselves and said, hey, let's schedule this in uh, with intention. But I've got um, other you know, in the months of September and October, I just contact people and I say, what's your schedule looking like around this month? And if they can't do it, then I'm like, okay, what about this month? So I just have people scattered all over the schedule, different months. And then as it gets closer, I hit, you know, I hit them up and I'm like, are you ready to do drop that <laughs> interview? Let's do it. So it's, yeah, I mean, like you said, and you would know this with all the editing that you do with your vlogging and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but even with TikToks, like it's not just like, <laughs> even with what you post on Instagram, right? Everything is, um, it's interesting you talk about algorithm, algorithms and the numbers and all of that because my friend ever knew she was always looking at that stuff. And sometimes should come on, should post on my behalf. Like if I was too busy with uh, work, with teaching, she would be posting on my behalf. But she she cares about all those numbers. Me, I'm just kind of like, I, I never think about it. But now, again, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, maybe I need to pay attention to No, don't pay attention. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I, I got to pay more attention by the sound of it. So, yeah. It's just stressful, honestly. Oh. Um, yeah. I, I don't, it's been so freeing not mm. to think about that, um, especially with TikTok, because it's so random. Mm. Um, I have a, yeah, I have one video right now that's doing super well, but I was like, mm -hmm. I don't, it's around like plus size fashion. I found like, mm. a customer that I liked, but I don't create content on plus size fashion. And so I was like, right. all these new followers are probably going to be kind of disappointed. <laughs> don't do uh. like, maybe I could, but um yeah, I think once people worry too much about the analytics, it takes away from the fun of creating. Yeah. Do yeah. you um do you try and create um the same thing and then post it across your platforms, or is TikTok a, a little snippet here and then maybe a longer version on Instagram? Because even that takes a lot of thinking. Like that that's what people don't get, right? Even that takes time where you've got a plan and yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. So I used to, I used to have to do that with YouTube and then make snippets for um, Instagram and Facebook. And that was a lot of work. Um, <laughs> right now, I just, I do it on TikTok and I have it like, then I upload it to Instagram and that's where I've left it. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So it's, does that, um, you know, now that you're, um, are you finding a bit more joy now that you're able to kind of say, hey, I'm, I'm not going to think too much about it. I'm just going to, like, is it really kind of also helping with um, your healing and your mental health, you know, just not feeling that pressure to be there all the time? Yeah. Um, Self control. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I think when things are fun um, or if they're like, if your content is like meaningful, mm -hmm. then it makes it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like the freedom of posting whenever I want right now. <laughs> yeah. I um, think I, yeah. You know, like I just want to say, cause um, what it was like, I love the color uh, snack calls that you're doing, but there was something like it's, um, there was something that you had shared 
uh, around your mental health struggles and it kind of really kind of like oh got me <laughs> like I, I was it made me feel some kind of way and you know as I told you like off screen you know like I have everyone that comes on as a guest as a wish list. They're, you you belong on the wish list first. You have a place on the wish list until I have the guts to <laughs> build up the courage to ask. And when I saw what you had posted, like I was honestly going through some just, it's been a really, just a very difficult year, like mm -hmm. you know, as an educator in terms of the work that I'm doing, there's been a lot of like ups and downs and more so in this end of the the school year mm -hmm. so when I happen to you know like I told you I don't really scroll um, I'm kind of like get on do what I gotta do get off um, and then I just read that and I was just like oh okay now I have to I now I have to build up the courage to ask Misha to come and share um, just a bit of who you were because I loved seeing you know the fun stuff but when I read you know this reflection that you had posted and I wasn't even like on the day like I remember it might have been a few days after where I kind of like saw it and I was just like okay <laughs> this is a sign like it yeah it really just made me kind of reflect and think about just just a lot of the struggles that I've been going through just with work and and a whole bunch of things making me feel some kind of way so you know I love that you create the fun stuff, but I also truly love that you happen to just drop these <laughs> gems. This this personal experience on that day that kind of really made me really reassess kind of like what had been kind of going on with me. So that's yeah. Then I have then I was just like, oh my god. Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm feeling some kind of way. Okay, I need to get off here. Uh, you know, and then I was like, Oh no, no, no! Now I have to ask her. Now I have to ask her whether she can come. In. Oh my god! How am I gonna fit her in? Like, oh, she's probably busy. Oh, what if she says? What if she gives me the scene? Anyways, no, <laughs> I'm so oh, glad it resonated. Um, <laughs> I I think vulnerability has been my greatest blessing on social media. Mm -hmm. Um because I get to find people who really needed um, messages. And it also just helps me know I'm not alone. Um, and so I'm so glad that you liked that post or that it made you feel I mean, something. it was really hard to read. Yeah. Because it really made me, um, yeah. It, it's just been very, just a very difficult, trying, <laughs> challenging uh, year. So, that really kind of made me, yeah. I was just going through all sorts of things and it was just to read someone else say, you know, you're not alone. I was just like, okay, okay. Oh. No more tears, but we're all good. We're all good, you know, like. <laughs> so yeah, I, I appreciate you. That, sorry, I don't mean to like cut in, but I was just no, kind of like, to like, just share that. Um, as you can tell, I'm trying not to like <laughs> try to keep it together. <laughs> like, but yes, okay. you, you, <laughs> you wonder whether whether you are reaching uh, people. You are that. That's what I wanted mm -hmm. to say around um, all that hard work and all that um, authentic and heartfelt content that you the fun stuff that you put out but also that real talk is is really it does resonate i mean it, it resonated with me so let me stop <laughs> no, that's, it's been the most rewarding part of putting my life out on the internet like <laughs> is um is hearing things like that or being able to have friends like dm me and be like hey I'm actually working through this. Could you help me find someone to talk to? Or, um, yeah, I I think it's it can be so scary in everything to feel alone. Um, so when you can find people who are willing to talk about their life openly, it helps. It just helps. I I like love I love hearing people's stories. I love when people DM me and talk to me about things. 
Um, mm -hmm. And I'm always hoping that I never come off like unapproachable because like mm -hmm. you are more than welcome to come into my DMs. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I love it. Do you, um, yeah, I mean, do you feel uh, in terms of moving forward and, and, and thinking about mental health, you know, advocacy, uh, the advocacy work you do around mental health, are there, um, you know, do you have any aspirations or goals or things in mind that you would like to perhaps pursue around um, whether it's a study or research into mental health? I've actually always wanted to be a therapist, like, mm. like from when I was little in grade school. Um, I quite honestly am a horrible student. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I am actually still working on my degree. I'm just working on it really slowly. Mm -hmm. And um, I've spent most of my adult life being a caregiver. Um, so I have a special part of my heart that loves people with special needs. Um, I also work with elderly right now. And, um, and I love my Pacifica community. So mm -hmm. I think there is a need though for Pacifica people to be mm. educated in mental health and or helping somehow. So even if I don't become a therapist, um, I do like to teach. And mm. so I would love to do like workshops or um, just teaching basics of like putting words to the emotions that you're feeling, teaching mm. coping skills, anything that could help people, even if they don't want professional help, um, just some type of mental health literacy. Um, yeah, because my in my current job, so I'm still a caregiver for people with disabilities. And then I'm also um, like a recruitment and trainer for um, my other company who sends out caregivers to the elderly people in our community. And so I love the training aspect. Like I love teaching right. people how to care for other people. You're like, I'm the bo boss lady here. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, let's talk about how to be nice to others, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I, think, um, I think I would find it most fulfilling to be able to teach others how to help themselves. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think being a therapist would be cool. I just don't know if educate, like if I will make it to mm -hmm. that point. <laughs> All in good time, I yes. think. Um, the reason why I had asked, because I was thinking about uh, how you shared, um, you know, that you are very open to uh, to people just reaching out to you through, through you know, DMs and, and things like that. And I was wondering at what point, um, you know, not having any training around... Um, you know, professional training, uh, sorry, is what I'm saying, but just having the heart for your community, how do you know where to draw the line in terms of your own um, self, uh, your own well-being, um, especially because you also experience ups and downs, you know, like it, it's the, it's normal, right? You, you go mm -hmm. through some great days and other days. So I was wondering how do you, draw the not draw the line sounds really harsh but how do you um find the balance so that you it's not also harming you mm -hmm. in a way I don't know if that came out right so yeah no yeah. I um I had to work really hard on setting boundaries or at mm. least emotional boundaries um to know that like I'm here and I'm open to help people but it also isn't my pain to take on a lot of times. I think we can empathize without feeling like it's my responsibility now to make sure this person is um, taken care of. And I see that in like the most loving way. Like mm. I need that boundary mm. in order to continue to like be helpful. Um, and I always know like if conversations, if what the person is experiencing 
is beyond my scope of like understanding, mm -hmm. uh, I will always refer to help. And so I take a lot of time to like try different or, or to know the resources. Um, so currently, um, Kamala from Hawaii's Mental Health and I, um, we, facil we help facilitate uh, group therapy under under a therapist though that is a group, um, and it's just for specific people. Mm. And so, yeah, I like to refer people out um, to people who could be the best help. But yeah, but if it's just listening, like I'm here, it's fine. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. You know, boundaries. That's the word I was looking for. I was like, what's the word? What's the word? So I'm glad. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Because I. I. Yeah. Because you just naturally seem to be such a giving person. You know, really, um, kind and caring for others. So I was just like, oh, you know, that that can be worrisome, right? Sometimes. So I love that you've said, you know, you need to establish the boundaries. Um, so then self-care, when you're, when you're not creating content, this is why I ask every guest this, because everyone that comes on the show is super busy, uh, whether, you know, just smashing goals in their respective fields, being change makers, change um, impacting their communities, uh, doing advocacy uh, work like yourself. So when you are not the content creator, uh, when you're not love me sh that people know you by, what are you doing to just look after yourself? Um, <clears throat> I think people would be really surprised on how boring I am. <laughs> <laughs> say that <laughs> or even in real life I always I always wonder what people think because I talk so much on camera right. I don't talk a lot <laughs> yeah. um but for self-care I think um allowing myself to do nothing is really helpful because I think sometimes we think we have to be productive all the time but mm -hmm. knowing like it's okay if I want to sit and watch a movie or take a nap right. or <laughs> do absolutely nothing um, because my time is for me. And um, sometimes that looks like, you know, going out to eat with someone or um, I do a lot of, I really like to be in my house. <laughs> mm. So I, I read a lot. Um, I do like paint by numbers. Mm. I'm really just an old grandma. Um, if I knew how to crochet, I would probably do that too, but I don't. Um, My students are so, we have a crochet club. They're so good at it. They're like, would you like to try Miss Rossa? I'm like, nah, you go hard. You go hard. <laughs> you can do it for me. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I really enjoy spending time, uh, with my family. I love my nephews. Um, and I try to keep a lot of like me time unplugged. And I and I notice sometimes like I'm scrolling, just mm -hmm. like mindless scrolling. And I was like, I could probably go play a game with the kids or like talk to them. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I think I allow myself to do a lot of nothing when I want to, and that has helped me refuel and find. And that's okay. Joy in. Yeah, it's okay. Don't forget, you know, that's there's nothing wrong with that. I think, yeah, sometimes like weekends, weekends is podcast stuff for me, but I don't mind not having to go out. Like if I do want to like go out on an adventure, I mean, sometimes I'm that person who would just jump on a train and just go somewhere and just get off at a random train station just because That's I so see cool. something that is like catches my eye, right? Uh -huh. I'm that person. But then I'm also like after a long week of school, I'm also that person who would just like, just chill, sit on the balcony and just, just, I'm such a daydreamer. <laughs> like I would just, that's how I disconnect. So, you mm -hmm. know, I'm glad that you also get to do, and there's nothing wrong with just, you know, kick back and watch a show or daydream. <laughs> I am nothing wrong with that at all. <laughs> I'm reliably boring. So if you want friends who just will sit on the couch with you and you don't have to entertain. I, I very much am someone you don't have to like 
entertain right. um, if you're visiting. So me and my best friends, like anytime I'm visiting her and she lives in a different state. Mm. And anytime I'm visiting her, we're just sitting on the couch. Like <laughs> that's it. That is what I want. <laughs> as long as everyone's happy, I think mm -hmm. we're good. <laughs> um, you mentioned you love to read. Um, what do you have any book recommendations, or even what you know? What What have you read recently where you're like, yo, this is, get on this. Everyone's gonna read this. I have three, <clears throat> okay. and I'm prepared. Um, but they're just because I feel like they're just different genres of things. So if I were to pick my favorite like Pacifica book, it would probably be the Telesa series. Right. Um, just because it's so cool. It was so cool. I, um, our book club, we were able to have Lonnie Went Young. Um, we were able to interview her after that, and it was really cool. Um, mm. At least I think we did. And then <clears throat> if I'm thinking about like self-help, mental health type of books, I would recommend everyone. Oh, my book is dusty. Um, <laughs> I would recommend everyone read the five love languages. Um, and I like this book so much that I made my husband get like a hardcover because usually it's just like a paperback. Right. Um, but I think it's so important, even if you're not in like a relationship or anything, to know how you would like to receive love. Mm -hmm. um, because so much miscommunication happens when we don't recognize that people are showing love, but in their way and not, mm -hmm. you know, anyways. <clears throat> and my current series that I'm working through that I'm really enjoying is called Throne of Glass. Oh, yes. Yeah. Very so famous. I'm on the third or fourth book right now. Um, and I, this is very much like my, my um, go-to books. I like, um, I don't know what they're like young adult-ish type yeah. of things, but um, yeah, in order for me to like focus on right. like reading and be engaged, it has to be like whimsically and <laughs> it has to have some type of magic or I'm just yeah. not there. Right, but, right. Yeah, this will be my recommendation. <laughs> Oh man, that's awesome. Oh, three man, that's so cool. Cause I was like, oh, I can't remember. I was thinking, I can't remember. Did I ask you for some recommendations? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you came prepared. Um, so yeah, um any exciting things uh coming up for you, or um, is there anything that you kind of wanna Put on blast in terms of the work that the collective, uh, the advocacy work that the collective is doing. Um, yeah. Um, exciting for me, not much. Mm. Um, I actually might start my YouTube again. I haven't decided yet, but um, I think it would be fun. Yeah, and um. So, Rosa, are you um, in contact with Polytube and stuff a lot? I not. I don't really. The the first time I heard about Polytube was when I interviewed um, another bookstagrammer, uh, Katrina, who's Polytube. Yes, reader. I love her. Yeah. So I was just. I didn't even know. And she was just like, "You got to watch this person and this person and this person." And I was like, "I don't know that I spend that much time on YouTube, on YouTube. but I'll just subscribe." So I subscribe, but I just don't spend enough time on there. But tell me, tell me, sis, what do oh, I need to know? Polytube made it so much more fun mm. to do YouTube because of the community of like Pacifica people. And you have people in every niche. Mm. Um, and so everyone was always so supportive. Like it's very much a like they would watch my things and it's like vice oh. versa. And you would make really cool friends out of it. Um, those that were here in the States, we ended up doing like a meetup and things like that. It was, but Polytube does a huge meetup in, I think in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, it's just such a good community. Um, but I know that you're on like, I don't know what book YouTube is, but like book TikTok or, you know. Yeah, I, I know there's, um... Yeah, there's, I mean, honestly, I, when Katrina, she was just dropping all these gems and I was just like, wow, oh, 
I don't know that I have time for all of that. Like, you know, yeah. like, I don't know. Where do I find the time to stay connected? Like, and that's why when you were talking earlier about, you know, analytics and all that, I was just like, I probably need to do a better job. But to be honest, I, I just teaching is like, you know, it, it's that's what I do during the week. And it's just takes up a lot of my time. And then podcast stuff is what I love doing. I love connecting with amazing, inspirational folks like yourself. <laughs> and so it's it's my weekend thing, right, where I can just chill and just connect. Um, yeah, So, but now I'm like, I probably need to look at the analytics. <laughs> no, no, it's going to crush your soul. Just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I, I probably need to get on that, huh? <laughs> But yeah, if you ever, I I feel like I found some of like the coolest friends on PolyTube um, and it's just a good way to get connected. I think that's probably the best part um, aside from getting to hear people's stories and like connecting with them is um, the networking that you can do on, on social media is crazy. And so, yeah, just getting to know people that do a bunch of different things. It's fun. It's really fun. I, I'm getting anxiety now thinking about it. <laughs> you should go to like, the next Poly Two meetup. That'd be so cool. I'm like, yo, I'm getting feeling a bit anxious right now. I don't know. Do like, <laughs> feeling a bit some stress coming on. <laughs> I'll, I'll check it out. Um, when Katrina came on the show and she talked about this lady. Faye, who does these amazing, yeah. I was just like, yo, isn't she just the coolest? So I would have to say, when I do have time to like YouTube, I just post the podcast on there and I get off. Like I'm not even like mm -hmm. that's that's just how it is. And then I, her videos will show up because I subscribe to her, right? Yes. Um, but I think it mostly shows her because I watch a lot of her stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't she the coolest? She's so cool. And her daughter, um, her daughter and her partner have a channel too. They do mukbangs and they recently started doing um, vlogs too. I think it's Des and Ray. Oh, shoot. I know their okay. face. But, um, yeah. Wow. It's just, it's so cool. I, yeah, I love watching those. I haven't had a lot of time to, to watch yeah. YouTube the way I used to. Um, but I, I love the friends that I've, I've found there. A lot of Americans or is it a lot of New Zealand and Australians? It's a lot of New Zealand and Australian, oh. um, YouTubers. And yeah, that just makes me want to visit even more. You should. I know. Drag well, your husband. Tell him. Let's go. Let's go, darling. Let's go. <laughs> Where you get my passport? I need to go soon. <laughs> it's like next trip. Is, I know. It, it's let's go right there to New Zealand. I think you'll love it. Um, I, I've never been to the US, so but I, really, everyone I've spoken to, yeah, for real, everyone I've spoken to that have been to New Zealand, who are from the US, they they're like, oh, it's just such a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can come visit so me anytime. <laughs> yeah, I'm um my friend. Emma, who just went to get married, and it was just a real small ceremony. But next year they're doing like this big thing, um, a year later. So um, that's kind of like I'm meant to go for that. I mean, the plan is we're going for that. Oh. But actually, I always tell the story because I was so close to going to the US um, in March 2020 uh, or oh, April no. 2020. I was, um, you know, all our tickets had been booked. I was going to this conference a Catholic schools conference. I was mm -hmm. the rep for my school, one of two reps. I was excited as we had everything planned, hotel, everything. And then I was actually going to go up to the capital, uh, Washington, D.C. and mm -hmm. like just check out, like I love museums and history and that kind of stuff. I had this whole thing like, yeah, I'm going to take the train and then I'm going to Shame. Then COVID happened. <laughs> and then like we had other teachers who were getting ready to also travel during that break to Thailand. We were all down to do this like like conferences and PD and stuff. And then well, shame. Yeah, COVID happened. <laughs> oh. So that never happened. I was like, oh, 
<laughs> okay, maybe I'm I'm not ever meant to go to the US. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, um, hopefully you yeah. can come soon. I mean, no rush though, because we're kind of a mess. But yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll just be like, one day I'll be like, knock, knock. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyways, um, sorry, I got a bit off, went off on a tangent there. Um, we're just, yeah, we're at the point of the show where um, I really just wanted to, I give the, the, I give guests the opportunity to, you know, drop some final gems, some final words of wisdom and encouragement. So mm -hmm. I'm going to let you think about that. But I, before, before I give you an opportunity, sis, I just want to say thank you. Um, like I know I've been like real, like, what's the word, like mysterious and like, wow, how, how your message really kind of affected me I, I haven't really said a lot um but I just want to say thank you because it did it really it really got me right here in the fatu oh. right here so I um I wanted to say thank you for that I do appreciate um what you do I do appreciate the content and love the content that you put out there um I'm so grateful that you came through today I know um I'm grateful because we had to reschedule because you know you had work, but you were still like, "Hey, let's let's try this time." And I, because I was thinking, "Oh, you know what? I need to cancel it." She's got work and everything, but you came through still. Um, and it honestly doesn't even feel like it's one thirty in the morning. <laughs> it honestly doesn't feel like it's one twenty four a.m. on a Tuesday morning. Like it, it really hasn't. And I I want to say thank you for coming into the space. Like it's it's never easy. Like when guests. Uh, come on the show and it you know they really they share just things that sometimes are very personal um and not always easy to mm -hmm. share so I do appreciate um you know that even though we're just kind of like meeting face to face for the first time that you um have just been so uh authentic and real and just real honest about um parts of your journey um so yeah Thank I just want to say you. you know keep up the the awesome work um with mental health advocacy and um and and what you and your friends and and the collective uh polys um with mental health you know all the work that you're doing around there and um just keep going hard um but also look after yourself um because there is only one of you so yeah I just want to wish you all the best uh for the remainder of the year I mean it is after all only ju it's June uh <laughs> we're halfway through the year um yeah but you know whatever plans you have for the rest of the year I look forward to following um and seeing <laughs> where you go the next chapter of your journey so um, let me stop and getting a bit emotional. <laughs> so I just want to give you this opportunity, um, Mish, just to, you know, close us off with some final words of encouragement um, just for anyone who's really kind of needing support or an heir. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> I think... I think one thing that we could all do in our families, um, starting now and starting with our with people older than us and younger than us, is to teach um, emotional literacy. So being able to put words behind how we're feeling um, can be so powerful in um, how we can communicate our needs to people. Um, I I don't know. I feel like people, it's easy to have all of like this advice. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing that I've learned dealing with like my own mental health is you need to have really solid reasons why you choose you. So you need to have at least three solid reasons why I'm always going to choose myself, why I'm always going to um, choose to live, choose to stay, um, because sometimes our mind can be an unkind uh, place, 
my brain often is telling me like all of these lies, right? And um, and if I don't think about like my three solid reasons why I'm gonna stay, um, it would be really easy to not want to be here. And I think that um, that's a really big lie that we kind of believe that things would be better without us here. And that's not true. It's just not true. A lot of people who choose not to stay anymore, they didn't do it to hurt anybody. They didn't do it for any other reason than trying to get like pain to stop. Um, and I think we can do something to help people before they get to that point, right? Of, um, of like that life or death kind of debating that goes on in some people's heads. So I don't know, choose you. I think um, we come from a, a culture that is very serving. It's very um, respectful and dutiful and, you know, but um, I think people need to be more selfish in like the best way. Um, it's okay to tell that you know, tell people you can't come to events if you just don't have the mental capacity. It's okay to say no to putting in money for fa'ala vlabes when you know it's gonna take food off your table and then make you homeless at the end of the week because you're putting in money that you don't have. It's okay to have these solid boundaries, right? To still love people and have boundaries to know like, I need to love myself so that I can be here to support everybody else too. Um, so yeah, choose you, be selfish, that's okay. I think self-care is, it's a necessity. It's not even like, it, it shouldn't be a luxury, it needs to be a need um, because we need to make sure that we're here and really want to be here. But yeah, that'd be my advice. <laughs>